we move on to the next person. And the next person is uh, Noel Mariam George, who also belonged to the same batch as Gayatri and is currently pursuing her PhD in international relations at IIT Madras. Noel has plans to continue her studies in a subject of interest and eventually become a professor. Noel, in fact, has taken the longer route to be where she is currently and is willing to uh, be talking about it too. Noel, please. Yes, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, okay. Audible, okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I'll just uh, directly uh, begin with the presentation. One second. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, let me uh, begin by thanking the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm really honored uh, to be speaking to the Gregorians. Uh, before that, uh, let me just address uh, the teachers, uh, pr uh, principal, uh, the students and parents who are here today to you know, listen to all of you, all of us here. Um, so when I was first given this opportunity, I was uh, slightly perplexed because uh, I'm a research student in IIT Madras. And the thing with research students is that every time you speak to them, uh, you just get more confused. They'll be saying something very simple, but then researchers just tend to confuse you more after speaking to it. So I asked the organizers, am I the best person to you know, speak to students of 9th to 12th? Uh, but at the same time, I rethought this thing because uh, it's important that, I, that researchers learn to you know, talk to the public and we overcome the stereotype about us being confusing and abstract and not being able to talk to the layman. So my aim is to be uh, lucid and simple. I hope to do that uh, while explaining what the social sciences and the humanities entail if you take them as subjects uh, for your further career. Uh, so before I proceed, I thought I'd just ask a question to the audience. Uh, I'm not sure if I can see the raised hand, but um, does anybody know what the social sciences or the humanities are? You can just answer it. Uh, I think you can, uh, you're not muted, right? Like, so Should if anybody- can, has... You can put your message in the chat box. <laughs> Students, you can put your message in the chat box. You can directly <laughs> talk to her. Uh, Have people put the chat box? I'm not really able to see the chat box either. <laughs> Nothing so far, Noel. Okay, okay, okay. If something fine. comes up, I can read it out for you. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so the way in which social sciences usually define themselves is by contrasting with the natural sciences. For instance, the natural sciences, often you're studying like objective natural phenomena, like for instance, what you do in physics or chemistry or biology. But in the social sciences, what you do is you study human beings and you study social relations. So this is like a broader definition of social sciences. Once you actually take social sciences, you cannot probably stick on to this definition. There'll be lots of debates about what is the social sciences, what is its methodology. But as of now, I think this is the basic <laughs> definition we will go by. Uh, hello, is there somebody asking any question? Okay, it's fine. Um, I thought I'd also list in what are the social science and humanities subjects. Um, firstly, we have um, in the social sciences, anthropology, archaeology, economics. Economics is something that Gayatri spoke about. Geography, history, law, politics. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, I can't see the slide here, but I'm assuming it's history. So I think the um, subjects that most of you are familiar with is economics geography and politics i think politics is called civics in until 10th standard so these are the social science subjects uh, these are not all the social science subjects but these are the main variants of the social science subjects that you'll find in indian universities and probably even abroad uh, within the humanities you have literature linguistics film media studies arts and aesthetics um, I think uh, most of you might be familiar with literature uh, because you're, you're doing uh, both 
English as well as with the SL subjects like Hindi or French or um, I think Malayalam literature. So these are the humanities subjects and these are the social science subjects. This is just a brief overview of what the social science and humanities subjects are in the first place. Uh, now I thought I'd just detail a little bit about my journey. So when I was doing my 11th and 12th grade, I took up the science, science subjects along with economics. So I think early on, I had a vague idea that uh, I wanted to do something in the social sciences, though I was not really aware of what exactly I had to do. Uh, then after which I took up my bachelor's in literature in Sacred Heart College. But in my master's, I switched to international relations. I did it in uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, uh, after which I did my MPhil in University of Hyderabad. And currently, I'm doing my PhD in IIT Madras. Uh, before I proceed further, I, these universities that I've mentioned, JNU, HC, or IIT Madras, generally, if you uh, watch the media, there's a certain kind of representation that speaks about these as just political spaces where there's so much of strife. Um, you know? So beyond this, from my personal experience, I would like to share that uh, central universities in India are almost like mini India. They're very cosmopolitan places where you will meet people of different communities, castes, classes, uh, re religious differences uh, from different regions, from different linguistic groups. And if you're a social science student, it's very important that you negotiate these differences on a daily basis. That becomes a major part of your social science thinking as well. So um, I'll just proceed to the next one. Another question that a lot of people ask me is, why did I have a stream shift into the international relations? Because the initial subject that I taken was literature, which is within the humanities. And then I shifted into international relations, which is a social science subjects. So is it possible to shift from the humanities into the social sciences? And from my experience, I think uh, it's clear you can shift it, especially for a discipline like international relations. It's a very new and emerging field uh, in which uh, the discipline doesn't have a specific methodology. For instance, if you want to study international relations, you can do it in international economics, international law, international politics, international geography, or a mixture of all of these methods to study international relations. So um, this is pretty much about international relations. There are a lot of uh, nuanced subjects that you study later on when you take up these subjects. But overall, it is a very multidisciplinary emerging discipline uh, within the social sciences. The next question is of, uh, obviously, what do you do after a master's in PH or a PhD in the social sciences or the humanities? Uh, the main option that people choose, especially if you do the social sciences, is academia, which is where you become you know, a professor or um, a lecturer. Another option is long form journalism. You can do all forms of journalism, but especially if you have a PhD, people opt to go for long form journalism. Uh, you can do editing work in publishing houses. Most of my masters, uh, people who did masters with me, for instance, right now work in think tanks or public policy institutions. So that is also an op option that you can do once you uh, finish uh, your masters in social sciences. Um, another option is the civil services and other diplomatic careers. Uh, because the civil service exams contain a significant amount of social sciences uh, in, so as to crack them, a lot of people who aspire for civil services or any other uh, state exams uh, in terms of becoming part of the bureaucracy choose the social sciences. Um, I think alternatively on a lighter note, because life is ex incredibly unpredictable and we need to be open. So somebody like Ruan Atkinson, who actually made the entire world laugh, actually has an electrical engineering PhD. So we should be open to what life entails, because as far as I know, I never thought I'd be doing PhD and to a great extent, what specifically my career might look like in future. Uh, what are the universities that you need to look for if you are doing a social science or humanities? I think this is something that Gayatri touched on specifically with uh, economics. Before I proceed further into detailing the uh, universities that I'm mentioning, uh, I think it's important to share a particular instance from my life, which is that when I was uh, in my 12th standard, I was focused on uh, getting through the engineering exams and social sciences was something that I had as a secondary option. And I never knew, really knew anybody who did social science as a possible subject. 
so i did not know what the universities were or what the options were if i took up the social sciences and it's something that i took up at the last moment so even if you're doing uh, social sciences as a secondary option it's very pertinent that you actually do a little bit of research about the universities um, and the institutions that provide you the social science subjects prepare a little bit about the exams so that uh, it will um, let you know all the options that are available so the central universities um, gayatri had mentioned it's delhi university where you have the top colleges like uh, uh, stephens and lady shri ram and ramjas and all of these colleges Uh, you have the university of hyderabad uh, ambedkar university jamia millia another important fact you can note is that there are central universities in every state for instance in kerala you have a kasargod central university in tamil nadu you have the central university of tamil nadu there's the punjab university uh, even in shillong there are universities so you can apply across the country while you maintain like the top universities like delhi or hyderabad in your mind as top it's important that you also look at the second tier universities that are central universities because there could be a little bit of lesser competition in each of these universities um there's also um there are universities in which you need to take the entrance exam like if you're specifically doing humanities the english and foreign language university IIT Madras actually provides you with a 5 year combined social science and humanities course this is specific exam that you need to prepare for so you can check out this course specifically in IIT Madras this is Tata Institute of Social Sciences this is the National Law School and there's JNU all of these universities have specific exams that you need to write for these universities so make sure you follow the newspapers uh, advertising when these exams happen and things like that uh private universities also i think my list overlaps with gayatri's to some extent there's ashoka shivnadar azim premji op jindal uh the main thing that you need to keep in mind is that private universities provide you access to faculty who probably are part of global academia and who have networks with global academia so if you study in these universities even though they are slightly expensive uh, in compared to like central universities or state universities uh the great thing about studying in private universities is the fact that you can actually build in social capital which will take you to the next level of being part of global academia or global net uh, opportunities in terms of other job options that you can look for as well uh state universities are also an option but as i've mentioned earlier make sure that you actually uh, do your research on central universities and other top universities in the country and after that if you still think state universities are an option for you please go ahead with it uh in this next part of my slide i thought i'd uh, detail a bit about what it is like to do a phd in the social sciences and the humanities uh, by speaking a little bit about my research specifically uh, my research is about internal borders in south asia's himalayan borderlands there's a certain image that i have uh, fixed here um, in which you can identify Uh, the regions where the inner line permit passes through in our country uh, so i study uh, the indo tibetan area in the himalayas um, so i study the rights claims of different political communities like refugees migrants citizens as well as uh, the rights claims of different enumerated minorities in these regions uh, so this is a little bit about what my research is i thought it would give you a small peek into what international relations looks like um another thing that people ask me is about how do you sustain yourself as a scholar um if you are doing a phd the main thing is obviously get a scholarship but another thing that you need to be aware of if for instance you watch the sitcom like uh, big bang theory you would be aware that researchers generally tend to live pretty meager lives and it's not very posh and often times you're funded by the university for literally everything in terms of your rent and in in terms of even your food so it's not very expensive to be a researcher and it's very important that you make sure you get a scholarship and if you get a scholarship uh, in the long run it's a pretty stable option but at the same time i would include a caveat in the sense that uh research is not as lucrative as other uh professional courses like engineering or doctor or any other mba all of these courses but still in the long run if you're passionate about this uh it is a very stable option that you can look for uh the final question is who should take up research uh people who are passionate and curious about reading and writing 
which is which constitutes a major part of research uh, i will also include a disclaimer about this because like any other job passion and curiosity is not the only thing that you need to have for research there's a lot of mundane things that you need to do as a research that you need to do dispassionately so it's pretty much like any other job but if you're very much passionate about uh, reading and writing at this point you should take up research um the good thing about possibly doing research is that the reason i'm doing research despite the fact that this is a long route is because uh, i'm doing what i love to do which is reading writing and uh, you know doing research per se uh, it's very important you have a lot of patience while you do research because it's a really long process um, another thing that i'd like to include is that um, after my education in several central universities across the country i've noticed that as a gregorian i've always had an edge in these universities because my first la my primary language of communication in gregorian was in english and i know a lot of people who come from different parts of the country uh, probably have good research ideas but because of the school training that they've had they're not able to furnish that particular skill that they have so i'm really grateful for actually being in gregorian and having been educated in uh, english language and as well as having so many competitions in which i participated in which essay writing and all of these skills were like very important within gregorian so i really think gregorians should think about research because it's a real possibility even in the sciences not just social sciences though i'm not really sure of how to detail uh, what it is like to do research within the social sciences uh, within the sciences sorry uh finally thank you um i thank all the organizers